All right, moving along to problem three. By the way, not sure if you can hear any like banging or anything outside, but there's construction going on. Um, however, we're just gonna work through it. Anyways, so we're gonna prove these three statements. We're gonna start with A. So we wanna prove that L1 of nu is equal to L1 of the um, norm of nu. So basically, well, norm, total variation, whatever you want to call it. So basically to show equality, we want to show by inclusion because these are sets. So let f be a function in L1 nu. And let's remember what this means. This is just L1 nu plus intersected with L1 nu minus. And you know, I right here we're going to just write x equal p disjoint union with n to be our Hondi composition because we are going to use this like all throughout this problem. This is like these exercises are all based on like this decomposition is our main tool here. So anyways let this um, let f be in here. So what does this mean? So the integral of f d nu plus is equal to the integral over the set p of f d nu, and this is less than infinity because um, f is in L1 nu plus. Likewise, we have the integral of f d nu minus is, and now here this is minus the integral over nu, um, n of f d nu, and that's because um, this is a positive measure and so we got to account for the minus sign here. But anyways, um, this is also going to be, um, let's see here, this is greater than negative infinity because nu is a um, positive measure. So this thing is, hold on, there we go. This thing is less than infinity. So this thing is greater than minus infinity. Okay. So what does that tell us? f d uh, variation of nu is equal to, let's just write out what this means, integral f d nu plus, plus integral of f d nu minus, and so this is going to be finite since both of these things are finite. And hence, f is in L1 norm of nu. Conversely, if f is in L1 of variation of nu, then we can write out um, infinity is going to be strictly greater than the integral over f d nu, just by definition, and that's equal to the integral of f d nu plus plus integral of f d nu minus. Now these two are both greater than or equal to zero, so if their sum is finite, um, then both of these things must be finite. So, wow, that was weird. So f is in L1 nu plus because this guy is finite, and it's also in L1 nu minus, since this guy is finite, and this is of course equal to L1 of nu, as desired. And we can put a box here if we want, and we can fill it in if we want, but we don't have to. Anyway, so that's part A. And let's, instead of me scrolling down, I'm just going to delete this and start over again with B. All right, so if f is in L1 nu, then we have this inequality. This is basically going to follow from the case. Um, the We know that this inequality holds for positive measures. So let f be in L1 nu. Then, and then this is just computation, basically. The integral over f d nu, what is this equal to? This is just the integral over p of f d nu plus the integral over n of f d nu. 
um, and this is just the integral over p of f d nu plus and let's see here this is going to be plus the integral over n of f d nu minus let me make sure that this is right here this is a um, sine measure and this is a positive measure so I'm pretty sure we need a minus here um, to account for the signs, but it really doesn't actually matter because we're going to use the triangle inequality here and we're going to get this plus n f d nu minus so really regardless of what sign that would have been um, when we break these two things up we're going to get a plus um, but anyways what is this we know that um, using uh, we know that this formula holds for positive measures, and so we can write this as less than or equal to integral over p of f d nu plus plus the integral over n of the norm of f d nu minus. But what is that? Oh, well that's just integral norm f d variation of mu. And that's what we wanted, so we're good. All right, that takes care of that. Delete, bulleted. And then we go on to part C. So, we have this equality here, and so we want to show greater than or equal to, and then less than or equal to. Um, so, let F have norm less than or equal to 1 then by part B we have the integral over E F D nu is less than or equal to the integral over E of norm of F D variation of nu which is less than or equal to integral over E of just D nu and what is this? This is just by definition this. So now taking the supremum, that's an S, over all such F yields supremum over integral E F D nu F norm less than or equal to 1. This is less than or equal to nu of E. So that's the first case. Conversely, let g equal 1p minus 1n. Then g is one of these uh, functions in this collection. Um, and we also have, let's see what nu of variation nu of e is. This is just the integral over e of d variation of nu, and that we break up into nu plus, plus nu minus, and here we write it out a little bit more explicitly. We can intersect it with the positive parts of nu, and then the negative parts of nu. It's kind of a long computation. It should have been like written down like in its own thing, but whatever. Um, and so what is this? Now if we plug in g, then e, this is e intersect p of g d nu because we're just looking at this set and that's where this guy lives. Um, and then here we have to do minus the integral over e intersect n g d nu minus because g is negative on n and of course this is a positive thing so we got to account for the sign. Anyway, so we have this and this is equal to the integral over e of g d nu just by definition. And obviously this is going to be less than or equal to its norm. And this is a particular element, g is a particular element of the set and so certainly this is going to be less than or equal to the supremum over all such things of this form. Hence, because we have e 
inequality in both directions, we actually have equality. Supremum over the, the stuff. Just pretend that this is this. And there we go.